Well, joining us now is Secretary of State Sarah Godlewski. Thank you so much for joining us here. It's great to be here, Lance. All right, obviously you took a unique path into this current role. Can you kind <laughs> of explain when did you first get the call and when did you first understand that this was a possibility? It was almost a 72-hour turnaround. Uh, so I got a call from the governor on a Wednesday and went into the office and he started talking to me about the Secretary of State position and I started sharing ideas and even the work that I had done prior as state treasurer and even my work at the Pentagon. So being no stranger to government service and at the end he said, I would like to appoint you as Secretary of State. And I go, when, when do you need me to start? At May, June? And he goes, we need you on Friday, Sarah. And I go, okay and next thing you know it was 48 hours later i was sworn in in my green bay packer pajamas and the rest was kind of history well that is very wisconsin green bay packer <laughs> pajamas so some republicans though have asked if there was any inkling whatsoever before that election where doug lafollette won re-election and then he resigns was there any inkling had you heard anything about the fact that he might resign if he was re-elected no, I mean, Doug has been in that position for decades and has been serving the people of Wisconsin. And so there would be no reason why he, why would he not continue in the job that he's been for a long time? Well, Republicans have also asked for a special election. Their argument is there's three and a half years left on this term. The voters voted in Doug LaFollette. They didn't vote in you. Should voters have a say in this position? Do you think it's fair of them to ask for a special election? The voters also voted for Governor Evers, and they voted for Governor Evers to do his job as governor. And as governor, he has the ability to appoint when a constitutional officer vacates. And that's exactly what Governor Evers did, because to him, what's most important? It's to get to work. And that's one of the reasons when we were talking that he was hopeful that I would take this job, and I was excited that he asked is because he's like, Sarah, you're no stranger to constitutional offices. You can put your head down and get to work and start immediately serving. In his resignation letter, Doug LaFollette, he, he pointed to the fact that he said resources and staffing were a problem. He couldn't get done what he wanted to get done. What have you seen in your time in office? Do you have the resources and staffing to get the job done? We know that for the past eight plus years the republicans have been cutting this office and yet it does important work i mean one of the things we do is we authenticate any sort of interaction that needs to happen here with businesses or your birth certificate so if you want to do work in a foreign country it has to be authenticated by my office and yet we're being cut left and right. And so one of the things that I'm working on is how can we modernize the office and make sure that it is doing everything it can to optimize tax dollars. But I'm used to being scrappy and we're gonna continue to serve in the best way possible. You mentioned not only have resources been stripped, but duties have been stripped from that office. You mentioned some of the stuff the office does, but do you plan to try and reshape what some of those duties are moving forward, if you can, over the next three years? I mean, I'm going to bring a new vision. Part of building, though, that vision is making sure that I actually listen to Wisconsinites. You know, my mom always said, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason, Sarah. More listening, less talking. And so one of my big initiatives is I want to start listening to clerks and to local community members and really figure out how can this office best serve Wisconsinites, but I do think that there are things that we can do, for example, with democracy. We know that this office can work with the clerks. They've been attacked. They're public servants, whether it's helping with transparency or things that we can do with helping to make it even access with the ballot. So these are things that I'm going to continue to look at, and hopefully soon we'll be sharing some of those initiatives in the coming months. You've held several offices. You were the state treasurer and then you ran for Senate and now you're in this position. Do you see this as a platform for another run at another office? I, I don't even know what I'm going to be cooking my three-year-old tonight. You know, my primary focus is really on this job and what are the opportunities and what can I do to best serve the people of Wisconsin. And so that's what I'm going to be focusing on for the near future. We mentioned some of the duties you have in that current role. You were also elected board chair of the Board of Commissioner of Public Lands recently. Kind of explain maybe what that board touches and what that role is going to encompass for you. So the Board of Commissioners of Public Lands is actually our state's oldest agency and it provides distributions to public schools so they can buy hotspots, e-learning books, help fund our public school libraries. And under my leadership we actually provided the highest, the record-breaking distributions year after year. And this is important for taxpayers because if we're not helping fund public schools, 
Who is? It's property taxes. And we all know what that's going to lead to. So this is a role that I'm really excited to be in and continue our great work with public schools. Do you have something that you plan to prioritize in that role? As you mentioned, school funding is one of the big issues. So one of the things I think we need to think about is what are some unique ways that we can continue to earn revenue? And we have over 70,000 acres of public lands. Can we start thinking about carbon credits as a new funding stream for public schools? So this is just one of many ideas that we're going to be looking at. We also partner with communities to help with financing projects. When I was chair, we financed over 600 community projects because we know these communities are squeezed. And so how are ways that we can continue to help communities when shared revenue continues to be attacked? So this is kind of the mindset as somebody who has a finance background prior to being treasurer that I hope to continue to bring to the BCPL. Now, considering just how abruptly this thing started here at Secretary of State, do you feel like you're settling in now? Do you feel like you have an idea and a vision built up to what you want to happen? It's, uh, as I like to say, Rome wasn't built in a day. And that's exactly with this constitutional office. But we are going to make sure we are finding what are some quick wins that we can start doing immediately? What are some more long-term initiatives? But this is something that I'm excited to start leading and will continue to do over the next few years. Well, I appreciate the time here. Secretary of State Sarah Godlewski. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.